just added a few little bits and bobs just in the interim. Um, vacuum pump is on and the little breather elbow and um, that just kind of seals up that end um, of, of, of the sort of top end of the head. Probably just put, do with put the bungs in a couple of them. Um, and we've put the, uh, the crank seal in there and we've just cleaned up the flanges where the gearbox is going to meet. We've cleaned up the, uh, the clutch which we'll come back to later. I don't know if I've mentioned this but the, the rear engine mounts on it's just useful for keeping it in position and um, the bush is in place power flex yellow bush they're not making the red ones at the moment um, and on this end we've stuck a, the, the crank seal in that end um, oh, we're still not really sure what to do about the engine mount I'm just waiting on some options and um, we've got the uh, replacement uh, cam wheel in place um, the old one had the timing pin broken on the 2.2 so the 8 valve one fits perfectly we've got that red in place with the timing pin in and we've also put the cam seal in which wasn't in there before so um, uh, we've also put the uh, glow plugs in um, they were good brews all tested fine so I've just took them back in for now and then uh, we've got the gearbox ready um, so that's uh, right let's talk about that just very briefly so what we've got here is HDI engine block um, an HDI engine a BE4, evidence, BE4, a gearbox, HDI, 5 speed. Um, however, we're using an XUD uh, clutch fork arm uh, and fork. Um, with got new seals in, FYI, these are self lubricating, so don't put stop getting grease in there, it traps all the dust and actually wears them out quicker. Uh, so they're new seals going in, uh, new, well, they're sort of seals, but they're actually bushes, aren't they? Um, so new bushes are in. We gave the box just a quick look of paint just to make it easy to manage. Um, and you don't need to put the actual arm on there yet because you'll need to move this about to be able to get the um, to be able to get the clutch on. So then we have an XUD clutch. Uh, this is an Helix Autosport uh, six paddle, as you can see, sprung um, with pressure plate. Um, but it's XUD, so it'll hold even more torque than the HDI design because it's a pull type and not a push type. And for that, we've also got uh, over there somewhere in some storage a brand new clutch because obviously HDI car we're putting it in has an HDI clutch cable. You also notice this is a GTI flywheel, um, so it has the same uh, tooth system that the HDI does. So we can use uh, the sensor that we're going to sit at the top here. Uh, for RPM sensor and crank position sensor, um, but it'll accept an XUD clutch. So that's GTI 6 flywheel, uh, which is a bit lighter as well, uh, for the reasons, Google that and argue about it. Um, XUD 6 paddle clutch, pressure plate. Um, it is not brand new, but as you can see, it hasn't even been bedded in yet, so that's quite a nice uh, feature. Um, and that's attached to the HDI gearbox using the XUD fork. I hope that's made some sense. Um, if you're not sure, then give us a buzz, and we'll put new seals in it um, once it's once it's on. Um, but the reason I'm I'm kind of getting to this point is I want to time the engine up, um, and other than a DTI gauge, I can just use the timing pinhole, uh, which is actually there. Obviously, you access from the other side, um, and for that we need to put the flywheel in. So we're going to do that now. Um, the other thing that takes a lot of time. Um, that you probably, you know, you don't want to be watching me doing it. It's cleaning up all the bolts, for instance, the flywheel bolts and the clutch bolts. Um, cleaning other bits up in preparation uh, for fitting it. So the clutch and, and the flywheel were looking a little bit scabby because they just sat in storage for so long. So that's all cleaned up. So we'll go to, I've been chatting, wow, four minutes, sorry guys. Um, I'll get to a time lapse and you can actually see some stuff happening. Hopefully you've observed that thing has happened. I have been busy, I promise. So I'm not 100% sure uh, where I left off, to be honest. Um, I think it was on the gearbox over there, which is now in place. Um, and I made a bit of a boo-boo with my knowledge. Uh, and 
two things here. So first thing, the XU flywheel, which is actually a GTI 6 flywheel, um, and we need this flywheel because it has the right teeth for the flywheel sensor, for the HGI, and it will take an XUD pull type clutch, which will hold more torque, and I've got a panel clutch for, so it allows kind of the amalgamation of those parts. However, I don't have a timing hole in the back, uh, like the uh, DW10 HGI XUDs have, which would be useful. So, they are timed at the front here, which the H jump isn't. So, that's what we have, basically. So dial gauge on cylinder number one, we have the cam on the usual timing pin, that's normal. Um, this obviously is free on these three bolts here, to allow for the slack and slop. Uh, but the cam is in place, or both cams are in place. And then we use a spanner, and very gently I'll show you, uh, if we move this, so I'm getting in my lens. So you just very slightly have to move the spanner and the dial gauge moves. So I've got it centered on zero so that when I know that goes to zero, we're there. So I'll back off the piston a little bit. Right, so I am rotating, rotating, and I'm t just a gentle bit of pressure. Dial gauge obviously is very accurate. Well, my cheap one isn't that accurate, but it's accurate enough for this. And then just a little bit more pressure. We get to top dead center at zero, and it'll start going the opposite direction. Whilst I'm rotating the engine in the same direction, because the pistons come up and now dropping again. So all we have to do is just make sure we are exactly at zero. And it is very, very finely done. There. We are there, and then we apply the cam belt, which is also where I made a boo boo, because 16 valve head is that little bit taller uh, than the uh, 8 valve head that was originally on this block, because this is an 8 valve block, so we actually can't use an HDI 8 valve cam belt. So there's two cam belts up here somewhere, one, two, no product placement going on here, don't worry. So we've got this one, I'm in the right lane now, and this one. So this is the one uh, I think I originally bought, which is for sale if anyone wants one. So that's 141 teeth, and this one is 144 teeth. So there we go. You'll need 144 tooth HDI cam belt, not the 141 tooth belt. And now I think there's 146 and 148. I think as well, um, for 2.2s, you don't need that if you're doing my sort of setup with the 16 valve head and the 8 valve bolt men. So we're going to pop that on there. Obviously you need the 8 valve kit though, because you're on an 8 valve bottom end, an 8 valve pump, which we've already fitted. And then once we've done that and got it timed up, that's great. We're just waiting on a mount now, and I'll discuss that in the next video, because that also is quite a crucial component, um, which is very difficult to find to make the 8 valve block work with the 16 valve head, um, in your 307 or 306 or whatever you're going to be building. Um, so I think we'll talk about the next one. We'll just get this belt on, get it timed up, and then have a look at fitting the auxiliary system as well, which will be good because my uh, pulley has turned up for there and I've got an air conditioning pump to plop on down there. And then we can put the belt on there and um, sort of shut up this side other than the mount. So. Sorry, that's, I've just realised that's four minutes, but it's explaining some crucial components to make this configuration of block and head work. Um, and I'll put it in the description, uh, just these little bits, just to help you if I mumbled too much. So, it is sunny, which is quite nice, but it does mean it's about minus three, so I'm going to crack on. You can probably tell by the camera I'm shooting. That's it timed up. Uh, that's it for this episode. We're going to wrap that up. It took a little bit of fiddling um, just to get it right. Um, every time we tension things up, it would just take it out by half a degree or so. Well, not even that, um, but it's better as it is. Um, just for helpfulness for future marks, I've got some some old uh, not tip X because that seems to rub off, but that's some 
Good old nail varnish for my weekend work. And I've popped it on there on a tooth there. And for easy reference without taking stuff off, I've also marked up a tooth on the flywheel and made a little mark on the gearbox. Um, I wouldn't use that, you know, I'd still use a dial gauge. Um, but now for future referencing, if I'm a bit worried about something's not right, then I can just stick a pin in the top and I can just check those two and check everything's okay. Um, just to sort of eliminate any issues. So that's it, is it for now. Um, I've just got a little bracket to put on the gearbox and then I'm waiting for a couple of parts to all move on. So the next episode next week hopefully should be the shell, uh, the new vehicle with which this is going to find its home in for um, possibly the next year or so. So, uh, we are getting seriously close now to having hanging this into a chassis, so next episode, the chassis, a.k.a. hashtag lemon. Oh yeah, lemon. Citrusy, lovely lemon. Acidity level high.